Welcome to this Ash Wednesday service. Ash Wednesday is traditionally a time to recognize our mortality, repent of our sins, and recommit ourselves to Christ. We receive ashes on our foreheads as a symbolic expression of our faith that though we are mortal, in life and in death, we belong to Jesus Christ. This day marks the beginning of Lent, a period of 40 days preceding Easter, excluding Sundays, during which we prepare ourselves to fully receive the joy of Easter, the celebration of Jesus' resurrection. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of cloud and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountain. A great and powerful army comes. Their life has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your hope with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your heart and not your soul. Return to the Lord your God, for he is greater and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relent from punishment. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind, a grain offering and a drink offering, for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast, let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her family. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priest the ministers of the Lord, we. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the people, where is their God? The word of the Lord. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. 
for he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians 520b to 610. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We're putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we've commended ourselves in every way through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and in dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well known as dying and see we are alive, as punished and not yet killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so, they, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head, and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This evening, we begin the season of Lent by remembering the end. Not just any ending, any generic ending. It is your ending, it is my ending that mark the beginning of this new holy season. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Those words are at the center of our faith, booked in by notions of dust at the beginning and the end of our earthly pilgrimage. In the book of Genesis, we hear the words that then the Lord God formed humanity from the dust of the ground. And in the dusty ending of our burial rite in the Book of Common Prayer, we hear the words, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. We have no problem talking about our beginnings. Within my own family story, days of our birthday, is a time where we recount our birth narratives, the stories of our origin, who was there, what was going on and taking place. We can talk about our beginnings, but it's much harder to talk about our ends, our endings. We do not know, we cannot talk about them because we do not even know how they will unfold. Yet, I do know, that although we don't know how our ends will unfold, the reality of our ending is always before us. I believe that has what has made this time of the pandemic so exhausting, so grating on our emotional strength is because for extended periods of time, we have been face to face with our mortality for extended periods of time. 
And it would be very fair to say in this moment, why do Ash Wednesday this year? Can't we just cancel today because it seems as though every day has been Ash Wednesday during this pandemic? And that would be a fair response. Yet even in the discomfort, there is truth that our readings and our prayers and the liturgy that we will pray together this evening is pointing to. There is a truth that we find in this day of Ash Wednesday. Because avoiding death does not make it any less uncomfortable. And that reflecting on our mortality allows us to live more fully now, in the here and now. So what if, what if the point of tonight, the point of Ash Wednesday, the point of the season of Lent, and I would say the point of the, the entire gospels is about becoming fully alive. And we do that by knowing that we will not live forever. Ash Wednesday is a reminder that life after death is not the central focus or purpose of our faith. Ash Wednesday, Lent, and the entire gospel message teaches us that Jesus came so that we might have life and might have it more abundantly now in our current lives. That's not about tomorrow, not about after you die or some heavenly future. Now is the day of salvation. Paul writes in the sixth chapter of the second letter to the Corinthians. Now, life is now. And the older we get, the more experiences we have, the more urgent life before death becomes. And you begin to ask the questions, is there life currently within the circles and the fields of our lives? Is there life in my marriage? Is there life in my parenting? Is there life in my priesthood or my vocation? Is there life in my friendships? Is there life in the way that I'm living in this moment? Is there life in the way that I see the world and relate to others? Am I growing? Am I bringing life to others? Is there life in me even as I stand before death? And if there's not, why not? What needs to change? What needs to be let go of? What needs to be done differently? And those aren't just questions for me, they are questions for all of us. What if life before death is really what Lent is about? What if life before death is really what the ashes of our mortality are pointing us to? What if life before death means everything? So what does life before death mean for you? What does life before death offer you? Yes, our lives are defined and limited and bound by death, but our lives are not nullified by death. Death is not a diminishment or a negation of our lives. And our mortality is what gives our lives its vitality. So think about it this way. Death is the frame around the picture of our life. It holds before us what is. It focuses our attention. It intensifies and prioritizes what really matters. 
that this life does not last forever, does not diminish life's value. In fact, it gives it its value. With the reality of death, it means that our life is precious. Your life is precious. And every moment, this moment in the here and now is priceless. And there will be never be another moment like this one. The question behind tonight's ashes is not whether we will die, what we will give up for Lent, or how to improve ourselves. The question is about life now. What do you want to do with this gift, this gift of your life? How do you want to live? Do you have life before death? Amen. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature. Let us now pray before the Lord. Almighty God, you have created us out of dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. You may place the ashes on your forehead as we say together Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. 
Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. We continue with the litany of penitence. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, 
for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere heart believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last, we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us now prepare for communion.
but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take Eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever.
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, o Lamb of God you take away sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. O tree of love. O tree of love. You take away. You take away. The sins of the world. The sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have on us. O Prince of Peace, O Prince of Peace, you take away, you take away the sins of the world, the sins of the world. Grant us your peace, grant us your peace. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and fetal him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. You may now share the Eucharistic feast together as community. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. As we now enter the sacred season of Lent, let us bless the Lord. 
Thanks be to God.